A proxy is a software that intercepts traffic and forwards it to the destination on behalf of the client. This extra layer provides a lot of several advantages such as caching, load balancing, content filtering, and much more. It really depends on whether this is a proxy or a reverse proxy, but it is a proxy nevertheless. Okay. Some implementation of the proxy can be used actually by governments to spy on its citizens. There was a news, and I'm going to reference it in the video, um, in the comment section, comment section, on the description. Uh, there's a link, is it net link, that uh, the Kazakhstan uh, government actually forces ISPs to install certain certificate on the clients, on all the citizens' machine. Anyone will have to install this machine and trust it so that they can decrypt all the TLS uh, or the HTTPS uh, traffic and look at it, okay? Obviously, there's a lot of backlash going on there, but proxy can be used for bad things, okay? I'm gonna reference a video, guys, for the proxy versus reverse proxy. If you are interested to learn about the two here, we talked about this thing, but in this video, we will learn about the different kinds of HTTP proxy. We're gonna talk about two types of HTTP proxy, in, in essentially, and we're gonna talk about uh, we're going to show you a demo, like how to build a Node.js proxy. Very simple. It's not really a proxy, but showing you the idea and how to configure your machine to listen to that proxy. This is coming up. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Hussein, and in this channel, we discuss all sorts of software engineering by example. So if you want to become a better software engineer, consider subscribing, hit that like button, that bell notification, and with that said, let's just jump into this video. All right, so here's the agenda. We're gonna talk about two types of proxies, right? Uh, I actually this this video was this this topic was a huge, right? And I learned a lot about proxies, so I tried to chop it up into HTTP versus other type of proxies. So this is the, just the HTTP kind of proxies, right? So we're gonna talk about the transparent proxy, which is more like a gateway if you think about it. You don't really know it's there, right? Um, there is ways to know if there is a transparent proxy, but it doesn't really do much. Okay, and HTTP insecure proxy. That's another type of proxy that uh, is very popular because okay? just looks at the HTTP traffic and makes a decision based on that. All right. So how is a transparent proxy looks? And I most ISPs use that. Right. They don't use an actual proxy other than Kazakhstan government for, for example where they actually uses that and decrypt their your uh, TLS okay but uh, guys I talked about TLS here I'm gonna reference it here if you want to know more about that topic but essentially what what you have a transparent proxy you you want to connect to google.com which has a specific IB 44123 and you just connect to their TCP, but your ISP or some other router will direct you to a transparent, uh, it will act like a gateway, intercept your TCP packet, look at it, but it can only look at the IP and the source IP. It cannot look at the data because it is encrypted, it is compressed, it is, it is scrambled. It doesn't make any sense to look at that. It doesn't have to, it shouldn't actually look at anything of the data. It looks at the data and says, okay, the only thing it, it can do is filtering. That's it. Can this guy access this IP address or not? Okay. If he can, then it can forward. If not, then it's just this TCP packet goes to the address and the client just keeps waiting. Okay. And for example, you want to go to another website. Let's say this is, I don't know, some political website and this ISP or this is some competitor ISP site and this ISP doesn't want you to go there, so they will block that IP address. So that's the only thing it can do. That's why it's called transparent proxy. The client doesn't know it exists. There are ways to know that, a little bit complex, but you don't actually physically set that proxy on your machine, right? If you have these options, the proxy, you don't actually set them as a transparent proxy. It is it is forwarded as the part of the gateway, like exactly like a router, right? When you go to google.com from your phone through the Wi-Fi, your packets always go to the router, but you actually don't know that. You don't go to the router, right? Your TCP packets are always destined to the router, right, through ARP but the actual TCP connection goes to the forward. So, so your router essentially is the gateway for the outside war. Okay, so that's how a gateway works essentially. Okay, so, so that's the transfer proxy. 
It doesn't change the content. It only looks at layer three, layer four. It looks at the IP and port. That's it. It doesn't. It cannot look at any other stuff. So you can think of transfer proxy can act like firewalls. Right? Firewalls cannot look at the data, but it can say hey, this port is bad. No port for you. Come back one year. All right. So it can block a certain ports if it's a firewall. Firewalls are, are more, more a lot like a transparent proxy. It's a one TCP connection with packet switching. It just switches the packet, the IP address, recalculate the hashes, and then send it over. Right. So it's one TCP connection to the destination. An HTTP proxy, on the other hand, and I added insecure here to definition to define between an HTTPS proxy, which decrypts your HTTP. Uh, connection right so it's like a little bit different but here the client is actually aware of the proxy it defines the proxy IP address on their machine okay you can set it there and we're gonna show you how to do that we're gonna build a node.js application to act like a dumb proxy and goes to the, through that it's a very powerful stuff here right so essentially you define the proxy and you have the IP address okay when you do that you go to google.com your browser or uh, your browser or app, like if you do a curl request to HTTP Google.com, or uh, and you specify that proxy, okay, which almost by default is use the system proxy, right? If you don't specify it, use the system proxy. The TCP packet is destined to the proxy, okay. However, there's a big however. So the TCP packet, the packet is the IP address is the proxy. It's not this guy, okay? And the source is this guy. But you can ask the question, okay, if, if I'm not specifying the Google IP address, how does it make it there? We're gonna come to that. And that's why it's HTTP insecure. So if I send that thing here, okay, the proxy will receive it and says, oh, okay, right. I am a proxy, I know I am proxy. This is packet is intended to me from a layer four perspective. But if I look at the data, I know that you want to make a request. I know I'm a proxy. So you want to make a request to google.com. And that actually establishes another TCP connection between the proxy and google.com. We change the IP addresses on the packet. We create a brand new packet, send it to the actual Google IP address. We do a DNS, obviously, and we send that. How does the proxy know that you're going to Google, there is a header called host in the HTTP protocol. In HTTP 1.0, this header didn't exist. They added it in 1.1 and made it a standard. Okay, so in HTTP 1.0, you couldn't use proxies because the proxy would say, okay, you're going to me, but I have no idea where you're going, son. I have no idea where you're going, so how do I, how do I know? where you want to go, right? Because the client that targets the TCP packet as the, uh, the go, uh, as, a, as, as a proxy, okay? That's the idea here. And you change that, and then obviously the client gives back, the, the server gives back the results. Uh, it's coming from this time google.com, going to the proxy. So the client actually, the server doesn't know that the client, that's the definition of proxy, remember? The proxy, the proxy, the server doesn't know the client. In the reverse proxy, the client doesn't know which server it's connected to, okay? So that's always, I like to use this definition if you're interested about that. Okay, so you're gonna send the results, but what it is, is it, okay, let me change that. It is coming to you, sir, and it is coming from me, and send it through that red pipe, essentially. Should have changed this to red instead of green. But you get the idea, that's an HTTP proxy. What's the benefit of this? Right, what's what's the good thing about this? You use TC, two TCP connections. I don't know if it's a pros or cons, but you look through the content, you have to look through the content. That's the HTTP proxy. It has to look in order to make some decisions because it needs to know where it's connecting to, right? Host, okay. It changes the content sometimes, right? It adds its own headers like X forward to, so the server actually knows which client is connecting to sometimes, right? So, yeah, so the server can know which client it is, the original client, if it wants to. The proxy adds some layer seven uh, headers that actually 
makes the server know which the cl original clients, right? So it changes the content. It provides anonymity, optionally, like we did, okay? So we don't know the IP address, right? But sometimes, some, some proxy that we discussed adds uh, the 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 client's information in the header because it can changes the content right so it can provide an amenity optionally some 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 proxies can provide that okay and it is used in service meshes i like to add that because what linkerd had done smartly is they use a proxy server an http proxy server and they they make you make requests like that, HTTP service one. And service one is not a machine, it's not a DNS, it doesn't exist. But they ingest that because you're gonna send it to the proxy. The proxy looks at this and based on that, it makes another request to another service, right? So this doesn't make sense if you make uh, if you request it like that because service one doesn't exist in the outside world, but the proxy changes the content and look at that finds the service discovery and then makes the request and we're going to show some of that stuff all right, all right coming up all right guys so i have a visual studio code here i'm going to write my own node application that will act my as a proxy let's do that okay so i'm going to go ahead and open a new folder i already created a folder called ht proxy i'm going to use that it's a blank right so i'm going to use an index.js folder here so you guys see here and uh, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna const app equal require express. I'm gonna use express because it's easier, okay? And what I wanna do is instead of just uh, literally listen to slash, okay? And um, if someone makes a request response to that, here's what I wanna do. I want to console.log request, just, just log it. Let's see what's going on here, okay? And then I don't want to send anything back yet. Uh, well, uh, just send received, something like that, anything, right? And then app.listen, I'm going to listen on port 8080, and then say console.log proxy is listening on 8080 can be any port you want but i just chose the 8080 because it's it's famous okay and i'm gonna add a breakpoint here and i'm gonna listen to this thing obviously now if i go to chrome and i do a local host 8080 i'm gonna get a request obviously i'm gonna look at the request there are some headers there's a host who made that request and all that stuff right and then look at that we're gonna send that back to the results okay all right, it's boring stuff. So saying we've seen this before. What are you showing us? What are you trying to do here? This is boring. Okay, let's make it less boring. How about that, guys? So what I want to do here is actually go to my Wi-Fi connection here, and then open network preferences, and then go to the Wi-Fi file. I, I don't think I'm gonna lose any connection here. Might I might actually, but it's I'm recorded offline, so I'm good. Go to advance. And then go to proxies and then I want to add a web proxy and then this proxy is 127000 which is localhost and the port is 808080 okay let's see what will happen guys let's see what will happen now I'm going I'm not gonna even visit this thing I'm gonna visit HusseinNasser.com look at that I didn't even finish the request all right Look at that. See? My application got triggered. I'm going to HusseinNasser.com. What the heck is going on? If I do enter, look at that. That's probably that. I think that's Chrome doing the auto suggest, which is an HTTP request, right? So if I go to Google.com, right? It's an HTTPS. It doesn't count. I have to use HTTP. Let's go example.com. It's an HTTP. Like that. Anything that is not HTTPS will go to me because that's the proxy I'm using. Okay. And then guess what? If I go to host, see, there is a property called host. And it's example.com. That's the actual host that we received. Okay. So, all right. So it's really interesting. So, what happened if I do HTTP baloney 
Guess what? That thing doesn't exist. There's no baloney service. There's no baloney host. There's nothing. Maybe at baloney.com there exists, but look at that. I get the request. I get baloney. That's amazing, isn't it? Right? And I'm going to give back the results. That's neat. How about that, guys? So here's what I want to do. I'm going to stop here. And I'm going to do an HTML file called service a.html. I'm going to create another file. Let's use HTML5. And let's go to h1. This is service a. Okay. And I'm going to do another one, service b.html. Okay. And I'm going to do boop. This is how Linkerd works in, in, in under the hood, guys. It can deliver different. Uh, uh, this is. It can deliver you to different services based on on really the proxying okay this could be a query to the database this could be anything but here's what i want to do if i if someone visits service a i want to go to and and fetch service a okay but here's how, how we do it we're gonna do dot send file and using just basic node.js stuff i am going to serve back the file that is called i don't know what's the file called but it's called dot host so whatever the host is serve it as an html file so if someone visits service a i'm gonna get served service a right if someone service b this this is gonna go right so let's try this so if i do that now go back service a enter and then do that this will be service a.html. The file is there. So it's going to serve it and we're going to give back service A. Right? So if I do service B, I get service B. If I do baloney, then I'm going to get an error because there is nothing called baloney. Right? <laughs> so it is really cool. Right? Baloney.html. Okay. Now I'm going to create baloney.html and I say okay baloney stuff okay and uh, now if I do that you guys spell it right I don't think I spelled it right this is one L this is two L so let's do this and then whoop refresh do we get baloney we did get baloney right so this is the idea of a proxy a proxy takes the request before it sends it to the destination so what an actual proxy does is actually establishes a connection between the server does stuff and then gives you back the result but we can do anything with a proxy like what we are doing here okay we're going to any site we can build our own cool app like that okay and uh, what 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 um, the service mesh does is, is uses that power to take the host and Act like okay, you want to visit uh, service A, right? So I'm gonna query the service discovery, find the IP address, and direct my traffic to that service essentially, and give back the results, and then do that all cool stuff. It also Linkerd upgrades the connection to HTTPS and terminate TLS, does all that stuff, right? So this is not a a service mesh video, but essentially just using that power. Look at that. We can do so much, right? Obviously, I don't have internet anymore now, okay? But if I go to anything that is secure, it should work, essentially, okay? If something not secure goes through my proxy, right? So let me let me disable my proxy before I forget. But guys, that's essentially what I want to talk about today. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like and uh, subscribe for more content like this one, software engineering stuff, guys, all right? And uh, with that said, guys, uh, love you so much. Stay awesome. See you in the next one. Goodbye.